Lift up the word and repeat after me. I believe this is the word of God. I believe what God says because it is impossible for God to lie. Well, this morning I want to talk to you about how to get control of your runaway life. Does anybody ever feel like your, your life is running you rather than you running your life? Well, we need to understand this, that that was not God's plan from the beginning. God put Adam and Eve in the garden, and we can see in Genesis 2.15 what he did. He said, well, the word says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Now, that was God's plan. He put, he put Adam in the garden to guard it, to tend it, to keep it. And that's what He intends for you to do today with your life. He wants you to guard it. He wants you to take care of your life. He, he wants you to keep your life. In other words, you're supposed to be in charge of your life. You're not supposed to give up authority to somebody else or some other group. You are to be in charge of your life. You're to take control of your life. One of the parts, there's nine parts of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. There's nine parts, and everyone always seems to know these first few ones. Love, joy, peace, etc. Well, let's go down that line. When you get to the ninth one, it's self-control. God, from the very beginning, has wanted you to take control of your life. He wants you to be submissive to Him, but take control of your life. No one else should rule over you. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. Boy, that has confused people for years. Let us. Who's God talking about here? Then God said, Well, the word God there is Elohim, which is plural, but it's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They were all there in the beginning. He said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And as Charles Capps says, that gives you authority over creeps. So... He wanted man, and He gave man dominion. Well, so many words come out of that word dominion. Dominate. He, he, wants, he wants us to be in charge of the earth. Now, it doesn't say other people, but everything on the earth, the church is to rule over. Now, the church has given up so many things. Christians have given up so many things. When television came out, they said, well, that's evil. You know, instead of ABC and CBS, we could, we could have had all Christian channels. Back in the early days, it was hard to even give a channel away, a network. But no, so many preached it was the devil. And now preachers have to pay the devil to get on TV. Hmm. Now Satan tricked man into losing his authority. I've heard it preached that uh, man lost his authority to the devil. Well, let's just understand this. God has always had all authority. God has always had all authority. And God has never not had authority over death, over hell, over anything. Now, He has given authority, but He... The Scripture says He is given authority. It doesn't say He's given away authority. And there's a difference. There's a difference. Now, I could have Steve come up here and I could say, Steve, I want you to, I want you to stand by that door back there and that door is your domain. And I give you authority over that door. Well, I may give him authority over that door, but I still have authority over him and I still own the door. Now, if he goes back there, and uh, Brother Pryor walks up to him and says, Steve, I really don't think you should be back here at this door. Steve, I think that key that the pastor gave you to this door, I, I think you need to give it to me. Well, 
he may trick him in to giving him the key. He may trick him into getting all flustered and walking away and saying, well, maybe I didn't have authority after all. But the reality is, if he gave the key and he walks away, I have still not given authority to Daryl Pryor back there. Even though Daryl Pryor may have the key and he may be standing at the door and he may be back there acting like a hot shot. Excuse me, I didn't mean anything by that. But, but Steve is the one that I gave the key to and Steve's the one I gave authority to. Now here's the deal. God gave dominion to man. And man was tricked into thinking he didn't have it. The devil tried to make everybody think he had it. In fact, the devil came to Jesus at one place and said to him, I will give you the authority that I got from them. He needs to understand Jesus owns the door. Jesus doesn't need to get authority from the devil. And neither do you. In Luke 4, 6, the devil said to Jesus, all this authority I will give you and their glory. Well, you know what Jesus said about the devil in John 8, 44? He said he's a liar. And he speaks from his own resources and he, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have a clue what's going on. He's a murderer from the beginning, always has been, always will be. Well, here's what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18. He said, all authority has been given to me. That's what Jesus said. All authority has been given to me. And it wasn't given to him by the devil. The Father gave all authority to Jesus. And look at this in Mark 16, 17. Listen to what Jesus said. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. Who's it talking about? Do you believe? Do you believe Jesus? Do you believe the Bible's true? Well then, if you believe Jesus and you believe the Bible's true, then you must believe that demons exist. Jesus wouldn't say, I give you the authority to cast out a concept. I didn't get, he, did, he didn't say he gave us authority to cast out an attitude. I've heard people say, well, they're just mental. No, he, it doesn't say he gave you authority to cast out mental. He gave you authority to cast out demons. And here's what he says about those who will follow him. They will speak with new tongues. Don't let anybody tell you that speaking in tongues is of the devil. Jesus is the one that said we'll speak with new tongues. And they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly... It will by no means hurt them. Now, it doesn't mean that you've got to go out looking for snakes to pick up. See, here, here's the thing about demons and snakes. You don't need to go looking for them. They'll be looking for you. Now, what, did it, what does he mean here that uh, they'll take up serpents? Well, what, what happened to Paul the Apostle? He was on the island of Malta. In fact, we stood right at the place where this happened. He was, he was on the island of Malta and he was building a fire, and a, a deadly snake, it says a viper, attached itself to his hand. Now, I don't like snakes. I know, I know, some of you, you know, maybe like snakes. But if you have a pet snake, don't invite me to your house, because when I leave, you'll have a dead pet snake. <laughs> but a viper attached itself to Paul's hand. And Paul shook it off into the fire. Now the Bible says that the natives there, the indigenous people, they, they watched him for, surely he would puff up and die. That's what it says. But he didn't. Why not? Because a serpent, he, he had an encounter with a serpent while doing the Lord's work. And that's what the scripture means when it says, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. If you drink anything deadly, if you're doing God's work and somebody tries to poison you, the reality is, if you believe, now I'm not don't go out and drink Kool-Aid. See, here's where people get goofy. Don't go out and drink Kool-Aid with poison in it to prove something. 
You're not supposed to prove something. It's kind of like people that say, I've got a ministry of casting out demons. Well, your ministries until Jesus comes back, actually, until he comes back the second time and touches down on the Mount of Olives, you're never going to have your ministry fulfilled because all you can do with, with demons is just shuffle them around. You can cast them out, but they're going to go somewhere. You know, the demons that was in the madman of the Gadarenes, where'd they go? They, they went to the pigs. Well, when the pigs all ran off into the water and, and drowned, what happened to the demons? Oh, they must have drowned and went back to hell. No, they didn't. They're still here. Well, not right here. If they are, in the name of Jesus, be gone. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, this is what I call authority. He's, he's give, he gave man dominion and then Jesus specifically. He said, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You want to get control of a runaway life? One of the first things you need to know is if you're a born-again believer, and you must be a born-again believer in order to get control of a runaway life, you need to understand you've been given authority. You're, you're not the victim. You are victorious. And we need to quit speaking and acting like we're the victim. Well, life's hard. Yeah, life's hard. Then you die. Yeah, well, get over that attitude. That's not the way life is. Somebody may say, well, you know, they, they had to get sick because, you know, you can't just live forever. The Bible says everyone's going to die. Yeah, but you don't have to die sick. A born-again believer, yes, unless Jesus returns, there's going to be a time when we're full of years and we will pass on. We'll step over into glory. But the reality is, unlike the world, we don't have to step over sick and diseased. We can be like Brother Hagin sitting around the table and just kind of everybody thinks he's nodded off. Or like a, a friend of uh, Mac Hammond's that has written several books and great man of, of years gone by. He was ministering on the platform in Minnesota at Mac Hammond's church and he fell out under the Spirit. And then he just went to heaven. He didn't have to get sick to die. We just, we step over. Wow, isn't that good? So we've got to get rid of this mentality that everything's bad and it's going to get worse and then eventually it just gets so bad we die. And that's not the way it is. With God, everything gets better. We, you, you get better. And when you die, you die happy. I say you die happy. All right. Now, when it comes to uh, church, a lot of people come to church to get refueled. And that's, that's kind of good. But um, you should be living the same kind of refueling life at home that you live at church. See, the devil wants to destroy you. The devil is against you. He hates righteousness, and he'll do everything he can to keep you from knowing that you are righteous. He'll bring about guilt. He'll bring about worry. He brings fear. But the Lord didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of peace. 1 Peter 5.8 says, be sober. Now, that's, that's a sermon right there. <laughs> be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. See, he's not a, he's not a lion. The lion of Judah is a lion, strong in every sense. The devil is a counterfeit. He counterfeits everything. He, counter, he counterfeits everything. The Bible says he, he even comes sometimes as an angel of light. And it says, is it any wonder that his, his ministers come as ministers of righteousness? As ministers of right? 
You know, there's a lot of people out there that are uh, not of God. And there's a lot of people teaching stuff that's just not right. There's a lot of hypocrisy in the church, and there's a lot of heresy in the church. But that doesn't mean that there isn't true word and that there's not righteous people. Because I'm looking at a bunch of them right now. I'm looking at a bunch of righteous people that love God. A minister told me one time, he said, well, when it comes to speaking in tongues, he said, I don't teach it at my church and I don't really believe in it because 90% of those people are faking it. I never will forget that. That was so funny. Because I look back, I'm in the pastor's office. I'm in his office at his denominational church. And he says, he told me, he told me. And another pastor from the lake was in, in the office with me. He's a pastor now. Neither one of us were pastors at the time. He said, uh, see, I was teaching the gifts of the Holy Spirit in my Sunday school class. And the pastor of the church put a, a spy in my class and put a, a tape recorder in their shoe. It's a true story. And uh, so he recorded me talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And he brought me and one of the other classmates into the room. And that classmate that was in the room with me has now been a pastor here at the Lake of the Ozarks for over 20 years at his church. But he called the two of us in there and he, he said, he said, first of all, I want you guys to know I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I believe in speaking in tongues. He said, uh, many times I go out into the woods and I speak in tongues to the squirrels. That's what he said. That's his exact words. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, and all the squirrels are in the woods. That's what, well, you know, but I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Got to watch your thoughts too. And then he, then he looks over at me and this other young guy and he says, and by the way, he said, you know, even though I believe it, you got to understand this, 90% of the people that speak in tongues are just faking it. And I said, well, what about the other 10%? Well, we, we found another church. Uh, but most murders, most suicides, most sexual sins, most abuse, most wrong speaking, most cussing, most drug use, listen to this, happens in the home. You want to get control of a runaway life? You need to start living at home the way you're living at church right now. Why pick out an hour a week to be holy and then the rest of the week live like the devil? I know I'm meddling, but that's okay. Because you guys don't pay my salary. I've got a boss. And he tells me what to say. And it's just the way it is. And I've got guards by the door. You can't leave. You want to get control of a runaway life? You're going to have to get your house. Listen to me. You're going to have to get your house in order. You got to get where you live in order. Have I told you that most this is this is true most murders, most suicides, most sexual sins, most abuse, most wrong speaking, most cussing, most drug use, pornography, all this stuff where does it happen the most? In your house. I haven't seen anybody up at the church watching any X-rated movies. I've walked all over the church. I went to the there's TVs in every room. I've gone to all these rooms. Do you allow it into your house? You say, well, it's just me. That's right. It's just you. And you think no one knows? It's affecting you spiritually whether you realize it or not. It's affecting your authority. You think that you can curse, take God's name in vain, slap your wife, slap your kids, slap your husband. I've, I've, been, in, 
I had a couple in my office one time, and they said, we, we want to talk to you about spousal abuse. And I said, does he beat you all the time? He says, no, no it's, <laughs> it's not him, it's her. I said, but you're a big guy. He was scared. You don't have to be big to be an abuser. You want to get things straightened out in your life? Let me tell you something. I don't see people sinning at church. Is there sin going on in your home? Do you talk about other people? You probably don't go over to the fellowship hall and talk about the people sitting down the row from you, but do you go home and talk about them? We collected all the rotten eggs, tomatoes, and rocks at the door as you guys came in. I don't know if that's why. <laughs> all right, you want to get control? Give God the same respect at home that you give Him at church. And give Him respect at church. 1 Peter 3.7 says, Husbands, likewise dwell with them. This is talking about women their wives, dwell with them with understanding. Now this, this is something that men need to understand because I will say this, even though a small person can beat up a big person, it's usually the husband that's beating on the wife. Can we just be honest? Say 90% of the time, 99% of the time, the women are, are abused. It says, husband, dwell with them with understanding giving honor to the wife. Your wife is not your slave. Your wife may help you with things. We are supposed to help each other with things. But, but she's, she's not the maid. It says, as to the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together, treat your wife like she's your partner. And not subservient. Don't look down at your wife. As being heirs together of the grace of God. And then look at this. Look at this. Men, men, focus on this. Loretta's printed this out and put it on the refrigerator many times. So I've seen it a lot in my life. <laughs> that your prayers may not be hindered. You want to get control of a runaway life? Let me tell you something, men. I have guys come to me and say, why didn't God answer my prayers? This verse by itself will tell you why your prayers haven't been answered about your finances, why they haven't been answered about your, your health, why they haven't been answered about your kids, all kinds of stuff. Now, it doesn't mean that God does the opposite. He goes in, and, and just because you haven't been treating your wife right, he makes you sick. No, but let me tell you this. If you are sick, it will hinder your prayer in getting well. If you are broke, it'll hinder your prayer in getting prosperous. Why? Because the Word says so. Hmm. Well, I don't like that Scripture. So let's just take out, okay, everybody, you got your black magic markers. You know, the government does it all the time. They just redact stuff. Let's just redact that verse. Men, grab the Bibles. Let's redact that verse. No, you can't do that. Because if you're going to redact that verse, who's, who's the person in charge of redacting? Who's the person in charge of cutting things out with your spiritual scissors? If you can cut that verse out, you can cut John 3.16 out. It's, it's all or nothing. All right. <laughs> I just feel the love coming in here. It's just so wonderful. All right. Okay. Now, you want to get control of a runaway life? You got to control your thoughts. The scripture tells you what to think about and what not to think about. You got to control your words. The scripture tells you what to say and what not to say. The scripture tells us in Proverbs 18:21 that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And you got to clean your house. Get sin out of your house. Now, I'm not talking about going through your house and, and getting weird. But what I'm telling you 
is clean your house by cleaning your mouth. Movies are not bad, but bad movies are bad, and you know what movies are bad and which movies aren't bad. And if you watch something long enough, you say, well, that's not me, but you watch it long enough, you'll end up wanting to do it. Part of the reason that our younger people are in such a mess, Loretta and I were watching a Hallmark movie, rated G. You know, they're good. I I like G-rated movies because that just stands for good. Watching a Hallmark movie. Well, they don't see anything wrong with people who aren't married sleeping together and somebody has an affair and they talk about it. Now you say, well, you know, that's the best movie we can get. I understand. All I'm saying is, is it's intertwined in the Hollywood industry all the way through that sin is okay. And what our Bible says is not okay, Hollywood says it is okay, and the problem is, is that gets inside of you. You've you got you to gotta monitor what you watch. You've got to monitor what you hear. If you're hanging around somebody just cussing all the time, and they're cussing all the time, and they're cussing all the time, and all of a sudden one day you stub your toe, why is it? It's because that's what comes out. What comes, you know, the old computer phrase, garbage in, garbage out. All right. You got to know who you are in Christ Jesus. You got to know your authority. And you got to be led by the Spirit. Romans 8 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You got you to understand that God has given you authority over your life. And let's put it this way. He wants you to have self-control because that's a part of the fruit of the Spirit. So the reality is, is your house is either dirty or clean. Your life is either a mess or not because you allow it. And as I've said thousands of times, the world you're living in today was formed and framed by the choices and the words that you spoke yesterday. And the world you're going to be living in tomorrow is being framed by the choices and the words that you you make today, the choices you make today, the words you speak today. So if you want tomorrow to be better than today, if you want to get control of a runaway life, now, now follow me on this, and I don't mean this to discourage you, you may not be able to get control of this runaway life in its fullness and see the manifestation today. But if you get control of this runaway life, you'll see the manifestation tomorrow, I guarantee you. But you've got to believe it. All right? You've got your homework assignment for this week. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank You. We give You all the honor. We give You all the glory. And Father, we receive Your Word with gladness and joy knowing that when we apply Your Word to our lives, that our lives improve. Thank You, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen.